Hello students, welcome to the session. I am Mr. M. H. Mota, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering. In this session, we will learn something about the disinfection of water carried out at different water treatment plants. The outcome of this session. At the end of this session, you will be able to understand the importance of disinfection in water treatment and method to achieve this disinfection. So let's start learning. So disinfection. Disinfection of water is essential to kill bacteria and other microorganisms and thus prevent waterborne diseases. It is a well known fact that water carries a good amount of bacteria, rather the bacteria available at every part of this particular world and even certain amount of or type of bacteria are harmful to the human health. If we consume the bacteria then that particular thing will affect the health of the consumer. So it is very essential to disinfect the water and prevent the diseases which will be rather will affect the health of a human which will who will consume this particular contaminated water. The aim of disinfection is to reduce the number of microorganisms to a safer limit which will be safe for the consumption and which will not affect the human health on adverse side. It requires complicated mechanism that need the attention of skilled operators to avoid breakdown and the correct dosages. Generally, if the dose of the disinfectant is not appropriate, then it will affect the taste. It even will result in a some unacceptable odors and so on. The disinfectant is a substance that is used for the disinfection of water. Such chemical is known as disinfectant. Chlorine is a very common disinfectant used worldwide as a disinfectant. So requirement of disinfectant. How the disinfectant should be? It should be effective in killing the microorganisms potentially present in water within the contact time available. Rather they should be strong enough to kill the bacteria within shortest possible time and thus avoid the contamination of water and render it to the certain limit which will be safe for the consumption. The disinfectant should be readily available at a reasonable cost. It should not be too costlier. It should be safe to handle and in which method of application should be simple. It should not render water toxic, unpalatable or unobjectionable. Generally, if the disinfectant is making water toxic because of the addition of it, then it is not at all acceptable. So whenever we are adding the disinfectant, it should be added with a certain acceptable limits only. Again, it should not make the water unpalatable means it should not rather make water or give water a certain color or it should not make it objectionable for drinking from the point of view of its taste and odor. It should have ability to persist in residual concentration as a safeguard against recontamination. Generally what happens is that particularly in a developing countries where the water is supplied on intermittent basis means there is no continuous 24 hours of supply and in such cases there is a possibility of entering the water from the leakages into the water into the water pipes and they may contaminate or recontaminate the disinfected water. So any disinfectant added in a water should have the capability to persist the residual concentration as a safeguard against this kind of recontamination. This figure shows the bacterial cell. Generally it consists of the outer layer which is called as a cell wall from which the bacteria are generally used to absorb their food. It contains plasma membrane, chromosomes, cryptoplasm, ribosomes, etc. These things are essential to understand how the disinfection is generally take place because the ultimate aim is 
to kill these bacteria and one need to find the way out to kill these bacteria by one or another way so let's try to understand the mechanism of the disinfection of water the disinfection of water is achieved by damaging to the cell wall of microorganisms then alteration of cell permeability through which they absorb the food for their survival then changing the colloidal nature of the cell protoplasm inactivation of critical enzyme system responsible for metabolic activities so to achieve this there are different methods of the disinfection these methods are divided into two types they can be either a physical methods or chemical methods the physical methods includes the disinfection by the process of boiling in this process the temperature of water has been increased because of which the bacterial wall get infected and they are unable to survive this kind of disinfection is not possible at mass purification but such kind of disinfection can be done at household level second is disinfection by the light that light can be either a sunlight or uv rays then comes the chemical methods which includes the addition of oxidizing chemicals like chlorine bromine or iodine then the addition of ozone addition of other oxidants like potassium permanganate and hydrogen peroxide and the addition of metal ions like silver and copper so these are the various methods of the disinfection even we can use the addition of high dosages of acids or alkalis the chemical methods are generally used at water treatment plants and out of that even the addition of chlorine is worldwide accepted as the best method of the disinfection sometimes even the addition of surface active chemicals like surfactant or detergent is even done but this kind of uh, the addition is not at all advisable in case of water treatments the chlorination now why chlorination is famous the chlorine is cheap reliable and present no difficulty in handling a commonly accepted theory tells us that chlorine forms compounds when it is added in water interferes with certain enzyme in the bacterial cell which are vital for the support of the life of bacteria and thus it achieves the disinfection it can be divided into two stages first penetration of the cell wall by disinfectant and second its reaction with the enzymes when chlorine is dissolved in water it reacts to form hypochlorous and hypochlorite acids within a few seconds the hypochlorous acid is ionizers and dissociates into hydrogen ions and hypochlorite ions and it is the hypochlorous acid and the hypochlorite ions which accomplish the disinfection so when we add the chlorine the reaction of it with water is producing such kind of the products which are capable to kill the bacteria it is once again the hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions which accomplish the disinfection when chlorine is added to water all three elements like elemental chlorine hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions are formed and they remain at equilibrium at a different concentration depending upon the ph of water which controls the amount of dissociation so ph of water plays an important role in the action of the chlorine or the process of chlorine at ph less than 5 chlorine exist only as an elemental or molecular chlorine and in such case the effect of chlorine is very less at ph between 5 to 10 it remains in the form of hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion and these two are the major things which are responsible for the disinfection at ph more than 10 only hypochlorite ions will exist 
and there will be a very less effect of the chlorine added to the water when it is acting as a disinfectant. This may result in a higher consumption or higher requirement of the chlorine dose. One must remember that the hypochlorous acid is about 80 times as effective as hypochlorite ions. So if we need to achieve the highest amount of disinfection, we should make sure that the hypochlorous acid is present in a water as a disinfectant. This is possible only when the pH lies in between 5 to 10. The pH of water to be treated that's why should be maintained at less than 7 to prevent the great ionization. More ionization will result in a more concentration of the hypochlorite ions and thus the will reduce the effect of chlorine. The chlorine demand. When we add the chlorine, it reacts with all inorganic as well as organic impurities present in water. The amount of chlorine consumed in the oxidation of these impurities before any disinfection is achieved as a chlorine demand. After the chlorine demand is fulfilled, chlorine will appear as freely available residual chlorine. The free re available residual chlorine will then serve as disinfectant to kill the pathogens present. So it is essential to provide sufficient time essential for killing of bacteria so that the satisfactory chemical reactions can take place and certain amount of unreacted chlorine will be remain as a residual chlorine for the disinfection of water. So in other words we can say that the chlorine demand is a difference between the amount of chlorine added to the water and the quantity of free available chlorine remaining at the end of specified contact period. Forms of application of chlorine Chlorine can be added as bleaching powder or hypochlorite. It even can be added as chloramine. Sometimes the chlorine is even added as free chlorine gas or it even can be added as chlorine dioxide. Generally, it is a practice that in case of pre-chlorination, we use the bleaching powder or currently the free chlorine gas is added as an chlorine. The application of such gas is done by two ways. A chlorine gas may be fed directly to the point of application in water supply or the gas may be first dissolved in a small flow of water and then the solution is fed to the point of application. The factors affecting the efficiency of chlorination includes the turbidity. Higher turbidity always results in lesser efficiency or in other words, in case of turbid water you need to add high amount of chlorine dose. The major reason behind this is that the turbidity acts as a shelter for the bacteria and results in the higher need of the chlorine. The presence of metallic compounds. As we have seen, the chlorine first reacts with the different impurities present in the water and then starts killing the bacteria. So presence of metallic compounds results in a consumption of chlorine in the oxidation of it and will result in a lower efficiency or the higher demand of the chlorine. The ammonia compounds, as the ammonia has a higher affinity towards chlorine, it reacts with chlorine and forms the chloramines, which even are resulting in the lower efficiency because chloramine has a lesser disinfectant strength. Then the pH of water, as we have seen, the pH less than 5 or more than 10 results in the very minimal efficiency of water. That's why it is said that when water has to be disinfected, its pH should be slightly lesser than the neutral pH or 7. The temperature of water even affects the efficiency of chlorine. And next is the time of contact. Whenever any disinfectant like chlorine is added in a water, it needs a sufficient time of contact 
to react with all the impurities and then to disinfect the water by killing the bacteria so it needs an appropriate time of contact too and last is the number and concentration of bacteria the test used for the measuring of free and combined chlorine includes the orthotodolin test and the starch iodide test the details of these we will see during the lab course the forms of chlorination the chlorination is done in different ways the first is plain chlorination it is the application of chlorine to the plain or raw water supply as it enters into the distribution system this is very rarely followed plain chlorination to untreated water is restored when the water is relatively clear with turbidity less than 5 ntu in such case the normal dose is around 1 ppm or less this kind of chlorination can be used to disinfect the tanks to uh, reduce the growth of weeds organic matters algae and bacteria into the tanks but such kind of thing is very rarely used as a disinfectant method for the mass purification second is the pre chlorination pre chlorination means addition of chlorine or the method of chlorination before the treatment of water this kind of thing has different advantages like it reduces the quantity of coagulants it even reduces the bacterial load which is going to the filters it help it helps in maintaining the longer filter runs because of the reduced load of filters and it even eliminate the taste and odor but still such kind of thing is not very commonly practiced the post chlorination is something which is very commonly practiced at the water treatment plants post chlorination is the application of chlorine to water after the filtration this is the standard form of chlorination in which chlorine is added to a water as it leaves the rapid sand filter and before it enters to the distribution system next is double chlorination double chlorination or multiple chlorination refers to the application of chlorine at two or more points in the purification process generally double chlorination is practiced by doing the pre chlorination as well as post chlorination as an process of disinfections next is break point chlorination we will see that in detail in the next slide and last is super chlorination super chlorination is a process in which the chlorine is added beyond the stage of break point sometimes even the dechlorination is needed which means the removing of excess chlorine from the water this particular figure shows the break point chlorination generally when the chlorination is done the two things takes place first thing it kills bacteria and disinfection is effected and second it oxidizes the organic matter so when chlorine is added to a pure water which has no chlorine demand a curve such as line a has been shown generally this break chlorination is or can be understood by dividing the total process of chlorination into four parts when we add the chlorine into the water it has been consumed for the oxidation of different organic and inorganic uh, impurities because of which there will be no chlorine residual found whatever we add initially will be consumed in the oxidation of the impurities so zone 1 shows that there is no residual chlorine available after which there will be a formation of monochloramine and organic chloramine because of the reaction of uh, chlorine with the different kind of things like uh, ammonia to forms the different forms of the 
disinfectants still the effect of this will be very less and they won't be much effective into the killing of bacteria after that there will be the steep reduction into the residual of chlorine because of the destroyed form of the monochloramine because of the killing of bacteria and after which a certain break point will exist after which even if we add the chlorine in more amount will be available as a residual chlorine only because whatever chlorine demand is there is fulfilled in first three stages so this is nothing but the break point chlorination and is very essential to understand this in the process of chlorination there are certain drawbacks of chlorination too the chlorination is relatively low protection against protozoa it even lower disinfection effectiveness in turbid waters it sometimes when added in a higher amount like the superchlorination it affects the test and even its odor is objectionable and even one must ensure the quality control of solution because it sometimes produces the disinfectant byproducts which are popularly known as dbps are potentially carcinogenic carcinogenic means they are potentially cancer causing so these are the drawbacks of chlorination so that's it for this session thank you for your patience learning and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and even share it with all engineers thank you